this was a requested video on I think one of my monthly favorites videos because I tend to talk about the current book that I'm reading that month in my monthly favorites videos and someone wanted a sort of bookshelf tour and you know I like to give the people what they want so I thought I would oblige I have a lot of books and I just kind of wanted to give you an overview broken down into different categories of books that you might be interested in reading related to natural beauty, alternative health and wellness. I have a stack of cookbooks that I really like and sort of a subset of that is, they're not really diet books but kind of like books on detoxing or things like that. And then lastly, I have a stack of kind of spiritual, uh, personal development, self-help, I hate that title so much, books that you might be interested in. So this was the best way I could think to structure this. I'm just going to basically show you the book and give like a little one sentence blurb on it so that this video is not like an hour long. If you want me to elaborate on any of these categories more, or any of these books in particular, just leave me a comment and I'd be happy to chat with you more about it and yeah I hope that you enjoy this video and get some new ideas for books to add to your own bookshelf also I'm not like an e-reader person at all I've never owned a Kindle I've never done any of that I like to actually have the physical book and underline I think that comes from being in school for so long I'm a perpetual underliner and highlighter so I really like to have the physical copy of the book so that's what you're gonna see today <laughs> So this first stack is actually the smallest, so we'll tackle it first. These are just the books that I have on natural beauty specifically, and two of them have actually already gotten mentioned in previous videos. It's the homemade beauty book, which my sister got me for Christmas. It's just a bunch of DIY recipes for beauty products. And then this one is the Absolute Beauty book on Ayurvedic skincare, which I mentioned, I think, in my Me Time tag video. A lot of people were really interested in this, and I do really recommend it because it goes beyond just beauty, and it's more kind of an Ayurvedic perspective on life and holistic wellness. And then the other two I have probably are not surprising, given that I talk about this blog in every single video, I think. No More Dirty Looks. I am... I read this book, I don't even know when, six years ago probably, and I think it's a great resource for transitioning your uh, beauty and self-care products, and I mean, you guys know about them, I'm sure. And then this other last book is by Rosemary Gladstar, it's called Herbal Recipes, and it's just uh, a bunch of recipes for teas, tonics, oils, salves, and tinctures. So it's kind of like a natural remedy book, herbalism book. I haven't really delved into this all that much, honestly. I think this was something that had been on my Amazon wish list and I needed to tip my order over onto free shipping. So I picked it up, but I'm glad to have it as a resource. Okay, so this next stack is quite a bit bigger than the natural beauty book stack. This is my stack of books all relating to kind of alternative health and wellness. And again, some of these I have mentioned in previous videos. For example, Andreas Moritz's Liver and Gallbladder Miracle Cleanse. I actually have a four video series on this particular liver flush detox protocol. If you're new to my channel and missed those, I'll link them down below. But yes, I do these every couple of months, a liver flush, and I think that this book is really amazing. I have the requisite Deepak Chopra book. I think he's kind of like a, a pop alternative health figure, which is great. And yeah, I don't know, maybe I'll reread this at some point. I think I probably read it when I got it, but I've had this for probably 10 years. This is a great one. This is The Web That Has No Weaver, Understanding Chinese Medicine by Ted Kapchuk. My acupuncturist actually recommended this book to me. At the time this book was published, he was the associate director of the Center for Alternative Medicine Research and Education at Boston's Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. And I've actually heard this guy give a talk. He came and gave a talk at Brown when I was in graduate school there. Uh, oh, and he's also a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. So he kind of bridges the divide between Eastern medicine and Western medicine. And as you guys know, I'm a huge, avid fan of acupuncture. I actually had it yesterday. This book is really good if you're interested in Chinese medicine. 
Okay, the next two books I'm going to mention together because I think that they kind of go well together. The first is by Claudia Welch. It's called Balance Your Hormones, Balance Your Life. She is an Ayurvedic practitioner and a doctor of Chinese medicine as well, acupuncturist, and this book is absolutely amazing. If any of you are struggling to come off of hormonal birth control or having any other kind of hormonally related issues, I think this book is a must read. It just uh, really helped me understand like what's going on in my body a lot. And also she has an amazing recipe for a very nourishing uh, Ayurvedic dish called Kitchari. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it, but I make this every couple of weeks. It's kind of like I always have a batch around and yeah, I just, I really, really love this book. As an addendum to it, this book by Sarah Gottfried, The Hormone Cure, was recommended on No More Dirty Looks. I haven't read this one as comprehensively as I've read this one, but I actually recommended this book to my mom because she's dealing with some postmenopausal hormonal issues and just another really good resource for understanding hormones from kind of a more holistic but also medically grounded standpoint. Hormones are like everything, basically. Especially being a woman, I feel like I'm much more in touch with my hormonal fluctuations after kind of educating myself that way. This is another book I have. It's called Vibrational Medicine by Richard Gerber. Again, like, I'm just showing you guys what I have. I haven't read this particular book in, I probably haven't picked it up in three or four years. I'm very into this stuff. I'm increasingly getting into energy medicine and energy healing and things like that. So this is quite dense and very scientific, but if you're a nerd like that, this could be a good book thing to have in your library. An addendum to that would be this book that I also think I mentioned in my me time tag. It's Donna Eden's energy medicine book. I think that if you're getting interested or are interested in energy healing, Reiki, chakra balancing, all of that kind of stuff, I think that this is a wonderful resource. I've, I'll have i kind of like pick it up and flip to a random page and read it and I haven't like sat down and actually read it comprehensively like with a highlighter, but I want to. And then my last um, natural health book to recommend, and this made it into, I think uh, it was some tag video I did where they asked like what your favorite all time natural health or a wellness book is, and it's this, Taking Charge of Your Fertility by Tony Weschler. You might already know about, this is a very famous book and totally changed my life with respect to how I practice birth control, how I deal with my periods, how I relate to my body and perceive of my fertility. It's just amazing. My story with hormonal birth control is another video unto itself. I haven't been on it for six or seven years probably, but it was a very long process coming off it and took a very long time to rebalance my body. And I'm personally quite against hormonal birth control, at least for myself. And anyway, I just, I think that this book is so incredible. <laughs>
cookbook author and blog of all time, which is 101 Cookbooks. I'm sure you've probably heard of her, Heidi Swanson. She's a San Francisco-based photographer and vegetarian cookbook author. I have all three of her books. She's like my go-to and I just, I love her. This is her first cookbook. It's called Cook 1.0 and then Supernatural Cooking came out and then Supernatural Every Day came out. and. I make recipes from these just like all the time. She has this big curry noodle pot that I make constantly. Has like a really amazing uh, Japanese noodle dish called otsu that I make all the time. And yeah, I just like, I can't say enough good things about her cooking. It's very easy, very straightforward. And I think that they're just great cookbooks to have. I also have The Sprouted Kitchen. This is another blog that I really, really like. And again, it's vegetarian and very like wholesome food with very pretty photography. So highly recommend um, if you are in the market for pretty photography and healthy, fresh vegetarian food. And then my last cookbook to recommend is Good to the Grain, Baking with Whole Grain Flours. I'm totally a baker. I actually prefer baking to cooking, although actually in recent years I've gotten more into cooking. But I love to bake, and this book is just great. It uses lots of uh, alternative flours like rye flour and teff flour and all of that kind of stuff. And again, it's just, if you can tell, a theme. I like really pretty like a photography and nice pictures and yeah I just really like this book. As sort of a subset to the cookbooks I also have uh, a small stack of I guess you would call them diet books or detox books although I don't really believe in diets or like any of that stuff but these are books that have just kind of been in my library for a while and I think they're really good resources. The first is The Beauty Detox Solution by Kimberly Snyder. She has some good recipes in here and just, you know, information about food combining and clean eating and stuff like that. I think all of these are vegetarian if not vegan, but again, I don't adhere to that. Uh, lifestyle. I also have Chris Carr's Crazy Sexy Diet. I was so inspired by her story. I was really, really into her probably five or six years ago. And I think this is just a really, she has like lots of good tips beyond just diet for like how to detox your body and how to stay healthy. And, um, oh yeah, so you can see all my highlighting. And I even like drew a heart in a highlight on this page, which is kind of funny. But let's see, this page is on dry brushing. She talks about like infrared saunas, food combining inflammation in the body. It's just like a nice resource to have and some good recipes in the back. I think she has subsequently also come out with a cookbook. And then the last two are Natalia Rose books who I really like and have liked her for a long time. I have Raw Food, Life Force Energy, and Detox for Women. These are just, again, like everything, great resources, really good recipes. I take cues from her with particular brand purchases so like I buy the brand of stevia that she recommends she's the one that really got me into looking for goat milk products like raw goat milk cheese she's really big into that eating really high quality dark chocolate so she kind of has like sort of a balanced approach for someone who's like pretty strict about her diet so yeah I, I do like her books although I haven't picked them up in a while <laughs>
she's good. She's a Buddhist nun, for those of you that don't know. Also have talked about this in a previous favorites video. It's Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. He was a Holocaust survivor and psychotherapist, and the first part is basically an autobiography of his time in Nazi concentration camps, and the second part of the book is the development of his psychotherapy school of thought called Logotherapy. But I don't know, it's just a really poignant, meaningful, deep book. You might laugh at this. I actually haven't read this yet. I just picked it up. It's called The Five Love Languages. I feel like every therapist I've ever seen recommends this book. It's kind of like a cult favorite. And actually, Teal Swan, I watch her videos on YouTube obsessively, and she's a big fan of this book too. If you don't know, it's basically a way to figure out what actions by other people make you feel loved. So if people... Some people really like receiving material things like gifts, some people need words of affirmation, some people need like physical touch or uh, things like that. So I haven't read it, I'm kind of curious, and it was like a dollar uh, used on Amazon, so that's in my to read pile. Of course you know I have some Dalai Lama books. <laughs> what like spiritual new age hippie would I be without that? I have The Art of Happiness. I have The Universe in a Single Atom. I think my mom gave me this because she's very into the universe. And then I have How to See Yourself as You Really Are, which was really good when I was in grad school and having like a bunch of existential crises about why I was there and what I was doing with my life. So love the Dalai Lama. He doesn't need anything else said about him. I have Eckhart Tolle, A New Earth. I used to have The Power of Now, and I think I lent it out to somebody, but yeah, you know the drill with Eckhart Tolle. I also have an Abraham Hicks book, Ask and It Is Given. So I don't know if you know about Abraham Hicks, but it's... It's like too long-winded to explain here. Basically, this is the law of attraction one step deeper than the secret. So I bought this in like 2008 and I was kind of just starting to learn about law of attraction stuff. And I think this is a great handbook, although I do think that you have to be kind of like primed and ready to really implement law of attraction stuff in your life and it's kind of a cumulative process, but I think having an Abraham Hicks book around is good. And then the last book is kind of, it's kind of like a spiritual new age Bible in a way. This is a book called Oneness and it's received and transcribed by Rasha. A very good friend of mine from college was the one that had told me about this book. It's like channeled wisdom basically from source energy. And if that doesn't sound crazy to you, then you would probably be really into this. It's kind of just about the evolution of the universe and what we're all trying to accomplish here on earth from a oneness source energetic perspective, which also is the perspective that Teal Swan espouses in her videos. And I'm a huge, huge fan of her. So basically, I am not really religious, but I am quite deeply spiritual and I believe in oneness and source and all that stuff. So that's kind of what underlies my spiritual book selections. I feel like I kind of raced through that video because I didn't want this to be super long. So I hope that it was interesting and somewhat useful to you to get ideas for things to read in each of these different categories. Again, please let me know if you have questions about anything in particular. I'd be happy to answer them. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in a beauty video soon. I'm trying to upload one to two a week. Thank you as always for your comments and for liking my videos and subscribing to my channel. And yeah, you guys are just the best. Happy reading and I'll talk to you later. Bye.